time for another video this time uh about electric underfloor heating <laughs> so um so i have a natatmo central heating system that runs all the radiators uh and i have a smart radiator valve in each of the rooms so that means i can control the central heating very easily uh on a per room basis so you know make the study warm while i'm in here uh, make the lounge warm in the evening and not heat rooms that I don't need to. Uh, however, um, the kitchen dining room of our house has a electric underfloor heating system and those, the controller for the electric underfloor heating is not connected in any way to the rest of the central heating. So that means I can, while I can control every other room remotely via HomeKit or via the app, by the Natatmo app, I can't control the electric underfloor heating. Uh, instead, I have to go up to the controller and remember to set it when we're going away or to change it when we're using the room on a day that we wouldn't normally use it, for example. So I've been trying to find a, a, a solution to that. Ideally, I would like a connected controller that integrates with HomeKit so that I can um, synchronize it with the, the existing central heating system in the house. And I think I finally found it. So what I've done is I have bought a heat miser system. I've got a heat miser controller. It is called the Neo Series E, hang on, what's it called? The Neostat EV2. And it also comes with a heat miser Neo Hub. With those two things combined, I should be able to replace my existing underfloor heating controller, set up the hub and connect it all to HomeKit. And hopefully, if it all goes according to plan, that is what this video will show you. So let me quickly show you what I've got. And uh, I'll unbox the heat miser, the actual thermostat, try and fit that, and then we'll come back and do the hub afterwards. Right, so this is, this is what I bought. I've got the heat miser. Uh, it's called the Neostat EV2 and the heat miser hub. This is the actual controller that will go on the wall and be connected up to the electric underfloor heating system. And then this is the hub that will communicate with it wirelessly and connect it to HomeKit as well as allow access from the HeatMiser Neo app. So firstly, let's just open this and uh, see exactly what we get and then try and fit it. So we move that out of the way. So what do we get in the box? Hopefully, oops, I can get it out. There we go. So we get some instructions and then the actual controller itself. And then the thermostat, the actual under floor thermostat. I'm not gonna need this because my electric floor Heating system is already in and the thermostat is already under the floor. So I'm just gonna connect up the existing one. So I'm gonna put that to one side. I've also got some screws and that is it. So open this. So there is the controller itself um, with the connectors on the back. So we've got load, live and neutral RT1, RT2, neutral and minus. I'm gonna to need to look up exactly what all of these are uh, and then connect it up. And hopefully, yeah, here we go. So I should be able to unscrew that. Let me quickly grab a screwdriver. Okay, so we have a screwdriver. So let's undo this. Make sure I don't lose that screw. All right, there we go. So that's the, the front plate. And then I wire this into the wall and then screw that on. So hopefully this isn't too difficult. Let's have a quick look inside the manual. Okay, excellent. So here is the, uh, here are the, here's the wiring diagram. So it looks like, let's just get this the right way around. So looking at this, the, RT1 and the minus, so that's this one here and this one here, that is for the underfloor heating heat probe, the thermometer. Uh, then we have got the neutral 
and the live, so there's first neutral and the load, sorry, that's for the actual underfloor heating. And then this live and neutral are from the mains. So it should be pretty easy to install. So I'm gonna go through and take the old thermostat off the wall. And um, yeah, let's see how we get on. So the audio while I was recording this section was awful. So I'm doing this voiceover afterwards. Uh, this is me just quickly double checking that the power is definitely off before I start to remove the old uh, underfloor heating controller. So important. Just because I've turned it off at the, uh, at the fuse board doesn't mean that it's definitely off. It's always important to double check everything using a decent voltmeter. Um, I need to stress, I am not a qualified electrician. Uh, so if you are uncomfortable working with electrics and you're trying to do something similar to this, please, please, please make sure that you contact a electrician to get it done for you if you are not comfortable with electrics yourself. Um, this is just me showing you how, how I've done it. It is not me giving advice in any way. So please be safe. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good video of me actually wiring it up. So this is a, uh, still photo of the wiring after I have connected the new heat miser thermostat. Uh, you can see the, the cables are all connected there. So the RT1 and the minus working from the left hand side, that's the, uh, the under four heating probe. Uh, then we have got a gap for the RT2, that's the air probe, which I'm not using. Uh, then the two neutrals, the first neutral from on the left hand side is for the underfloor heating. Uh, then the second neutral is for the for the uh, the mains in. Then you've got the the two the load, which is the underfloor heating, and the mains in is the last live on the very right. It's uh, quite a nice quite a nice neat system, very easy to wire up. Uh, was no problem at all. Then the the next picture is of the back plate in place. Um, so it's screwed in, fits in nice and easily into the existing back box and looks very neat and tidy up afterwards. And then finally, we also, I got a quick video of me actually turning it on for the first time. Again, unfortunately, the audio was awful. So uh, this is turning it on. It's, it worked very easily, immediately came on, um, detected the temperature in the room and started working. But obviously at this point, it's still a, a dumb meter or a dumb thermostat, sorry. So it's not connected to anything, not controllable via the app or via HomeKit. That uh, requires the hub, uh, which we will move on to next. All right, so now that the, now that the thermostat's connected to the underfloor heating, it's time to set up the hub. And hopefully that will allow us to wirelessly control the thermostat and also link the whole system to HomeKit. So let's see what we get inside this box. All right. Not the easiest box to get into. Right. Okay. Okay, so we get a manual, we get the hub itself, we get a code that I'm going to need to blur out, what I assume is a power supply, a USB cable, and an ethernet cable. So, let's have a look. So ethernet cable, USB cable. a uh, power adapter with a number of different plugs. I'm based in the UK, so I will be using the UK plug. Let me get one of these other ones. The manual, and then the actual hub itself. So, and there we go. So, let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so I've just literally plugged it in and turned it on. So, let's 
see if we can get it up and running. So setting up, I've got the manual here, setting up the Neo Hub. Connect to the power, fair enough. Download the application. Ah, which of course is on my phone, ha. Um, so it was at this point that I realized I couldn't record using my mobile and also set up the app on my mobile. So uh, I took a screen recording of what I did and I'm gonna put that up here and I'll just quickly talk you through the process. So after launching the app and setting up an account for the first time, you are then uh, asked to pair the hub. Uh, that's very easy. You just have to press the connect button on top of the hub and then it picks it up very quickly. Um, after that, you then have to pair or connect the thermostat itself. That took, was a little bit more complicated for me. Um, it asks you to to press the uh, to go to the home button on the thermostat itself and press the the tick button twice. I had to do that three or four times for it to pick it up, but it, it worked eventually, and then it appeared within the app. After that, you then go through some options just to set up your heating schedule if you'd like. Um, so yeah, you get some options on whether you want to do a seven day, uh, seven day program or a weekday weekend program or any other variations on, on that. Um, I set all of that up and then it asks me to, um, update the hub, update the firmware on the hub. Uh, that took about 10 minutes to complete. So, uh, so it took a little while, but, um, good that it was automatic and, uh, and there were no problems at all. It just took a little while to complete. Uh, and then here's some video of me going through the app, just looking at the different options. Uh, it's got quite a nice energy chart so that you can see how much, or well not energy chart, temperature chart so that you can see what the temperature of the room was over time. Um, yeah, very easy to, to change the schedule as well or to go to away mode or anything that you'd like to do. And then finally, I uh, connected also to my HomeKit, to Apple HomeKit. That's very simple, exactly the same as any other HomeKit device. So just add the accessory within the, within HomeKit. Uh, it first adds the bridge, um, which was immediate. Uh, I selected the room for the bridge to go into. So I put that in the kitchen. I've actually since moved that into the default room with all my other hubs. Um, and then immediately after that, it detects the thermostat. Um, which you can then add to the room that it's in as well. So I obviously added that to the kitchen. The um, Once that's added, you can then set the temperature and also set, I think it's the away mode within the thermostat within HomeKit. Uh, so that was dead simple, very easy, as straightforward as adding any other HomeKit device. Uh, and then here's some quick video of me going to the thermostat within HomeKit. You can see uh, all the options that are available. So setting the temperature, uh, setting uh, the standby mode. I think that is, um, I think that's effectively away mode. So basically turning it off uh, or at least setting it to a very low temperature. Um, and you can see that within HomeKit, it sees it as two devices. Uh, you can have both the, the, the away mode setting and also the thermostat setting or the actual temperature setting. Right, that's it. That's uh, that was a quick video on how to install the Heatmiser Neostat E underfloor heating thermostat, as well as the Neo Hub Heatmiser uh, HomeKit Hub. Um, it was all pretty straightforward. Uh, it was done within an evening, which was excellent. Uh, and so far, I've been very pleased with it. It seems to work very well. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to to uh, link the new underfloor heating thermostat with my existing uh, Natapmo room thermostats. Uh, ideally, what I would like to do is get the Heatmiser uh, underfloor heating thermostat to to just mirror whatever is set within uh, with, with within the uh, on the radiator valve. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to do that yet. I'm going to keep playing around. If I do work it out, I'll update the comments below. If anybody else knows how to do that, please, please, please let me know. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to get that information so I can set this up completely. Uh, I'm sure I can do it. I just need to work out how. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm hoping to release more videos like this over the next, uh, well, a couple of times a month, with uh, ideally, uh, with the aim of doing about 20 this year. So, um, so hopefully more videos coming soon. 
I've also included a couple of referral links in the description below. Uh, one for Tesla. So if you're interested in buying a Tesla uh, Tesla car, then if you use the um, the referral link in the description below, you'll get a thousand free super mi super charger miles uh, with your purchase, as will I for for you using the uh, the referral link. So so please feel free to use that if you're looking for a for a Tesla car. Um, and also I've included an Octopus Energy referral link below as well. So if you're looking to switch energy providers here in the UK, uh, Octopus Energy are, uh, I would highly recommend them. I've really, I've really liked being with them so far. Uh, they offer some really good time of use tariffs. So overnight tariffs, uh, that give you much cheaper rates if you're able to charge your car or charge a home battery overnight. Um, and if you do wish to switch to Octopus Energy and use the link in the description below, you'll get £50 credited to your account, um, as will I as well. So, um, so yeah, please feel free to use that if that would be useful. Uh, so yeah, thank you again for watching and um, more videos coming soon.